Recording in progress. Thank you.
Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us to the, uh, for the first meeting. Foundation. Yes, uh, we know that uh, some of you have already submitted questions. Uh, we'd like to um, ask the technical trying to get the remote participants uh, in. Um, so, Rain, if you help us, uh, the technical does not know they are not being able. Uh, Recording in progress. Connected. So, uh, if um, while they're doing it, we would like to uh, start the same time. Um, and uh, really, thank you for all your input uh, through the consultation process. And uh, today, we expect that uh, we will commence from on how we can structure and format and the content. So, I can see that the uh, virtual room is open. Uh, Michael Hogan, we can see Vladimir working. Thank you so much. And without any further delay, I'd like to hand the floor to uh, Mr. and uh, uh, the IT. Thank you. Uh, morning. Good afternoon. Welcome, that are here physically, have almost a uh, standing only packed room. And of course, welcome to virtual events. Uh, this is our, our first uh, consultation, uh, open consultation process for uh, the week from 2023. So, uh, welcome. All. Uh, and of course, I want to start by um, by thanking co-organizers uh, from UNESCO, from ICAD, and and of course also to thank other members, uh, family, ESA here, FAO here, uh, and we also have so welcome you and thank you so much for support. And of course, I also want to. Thank all of you, our WISIS stakeholders, uh, for your continued operation and commitment uh, to us and to implement um, action lines um, because our, our efforts are, are really helping to, to drive what I would call progress in terms of the global development. It's in the spirit of, of collaboration within the WISIS stakeholder world that has really helped to nurture and to grow uh, the WISIS forum many, many years. First summits back in 2003, 2005. Uh, yesterday in the opening, I asked how at the second. I don't know how many of you here we're at either the first phase or the second. <laughs> A few hands in the room, about five. You can also raise your hand if you're remote. Um, but um, I think it's fair to say that we have come a long way, and but of course we have we have much uh, much work to do. Uh, so of course today this is a consultation process, and we you uh, we really want to. Hear to, uh, what more we can do to further strengthen the business process and to be able to better leverage digital technology can transform national as well as national development outcomes. The WISIS Forum 20 uh, will be held in, uh, in uh, uh, this time in March, will be convened of March to the 17th. March. Uh, the theme of the WISIS Forum will be action lines back better and accelerating achievement. Uh, I think that um, that theme, uh, and of course, the concept of back better is a good complement to uh, what we're discussing here this week at the IGF, uh, which centered around a resilient internet. So the UN Secretary General has, uh, has challenged us all 
on many occasions uh, to find a rescue, a rescue solution for sustainable development goals. Uh, he joined us uh, by video at the last telecommunication development conference, Ali, Rwanda, in June, uh, where he stated that the potential of digital technologies can help make up the lost ground, lost a lot of ground of course, pandemic, uh, and really help to to drive forward SDGs. And he noted that 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 potential was absolutely tremendous. His message, I would say, was further echoed by world leaders with General Assembly place in September, where we saw digital reference time and again by heads of government, uh, really pushing to build back better from the pandemic and of course, accelerate progress in SDG. I hope you well, I feel like this sounds okay, good. Um, I also wanted to mention that today, the ITU latest facts and figures, uh, which gives a sort of comprehensive snapshot uh, of the state of connectivity worldwide. Um, yes, there's been some progress, but I would say it's not encouraging those that are most. Uh, we still have a third of humanity that is totally disconnected from networks and services that can transform their lives. And while affordability has still, um, affordability has improved, I should say, slightly. Um, it, it, it's still a huge challenge, representing in many cases kind of 10% of, um, of, of, of monthly um, GNI. So we still have a lot to do on affordability, much to do uh, in boosting digital skills, and of course, in connecting that third humanity that has never ever connected. Um, I would say the good news in turning to, to this process is that the WISIS action lines, they actually give us a comprehensive framework. Uh, and that's a framework that we can rally around uh, in terms of our global development effort, be able to leverage the catalytic potential of ICT to get those SDGs back on track. So this open consultation process offers you of you uh, stakeholders, uh, a direct uh, opportunity to shape the agenda uh, to help build um, uh, of next year's forum. So I would, I would urge you to um, direct, uh, to put forward your ideas uh, and to really push for the most issues that you think should be, should be addressing. Uh, what are the hot topics that you would like to see tackled in March next year. Um, of course, the, the forum uh, we anticipate will uh, have a rich uh, and diverse program. Uh, we'll have a series of workshops as we do, high-level dialogues, knowledge cafe, a special focus sessions, prizes. Any of you look forward to the prizes, a hackathon, exhibition, and much, much more. Um, so I do encourage you, and Gitanjali has mentioned that uh, some of you come forward, um, make your submission as soon as possible, um, I hope, uh, and really do take advantage of the opportunity to be directly engaged and to influence the, the program. I think the, the, high, the high quality and the relevance of this dialogues and debates um, reflect diversity, expertise, and the hands-on involvement of you, uh, the WIS. Collaboration, of course, has at the heart and soul of the, of the WISIS. I'm, I'm confident that together we'll continue to best use stakeholder platform and multi-stakeholder partnership opportunity. Uh, we look forward to, uh, to your inputs and also your contributions to the stock taking database, if you've not seen 15 a lot of uh, an 
interpreting ability. Um, and it, it's, it's an incredible resource. And so if you're dealing with a, a, a challenge or want to see how others have, have tackled certain issues, that stock taking database, incredible, incredible. Um, I, I do, um, I have to say, or I get in trouble, uh, that the WISIS forum um, is an extra budgetary activity uh, for the ITU, for our partner. And so we do encourage you to keep We're always grateful for the options that come in from our partners. And we'd like you to consider ways that you can actually uh, partner. And uh, uh, I also want to reference um, the ITU conference that took place uh, back in, in September. Um, the UN Secretary General address uh, reiterated the importance of this process. He reiterated um, the need to further support the World Summit by the outcomes and the process uh, that were at the WISP um, and of course here at, uh, at the IGF. I would say also at that conference, um, it was important to note that our member states uh, unanimously supported our WISP action lines and the links that those action lines have to 17 sustainable development goals. I know Dr. Minkin is with us and a big advocate of uh, linking those two processes. ITU century underscore at uh, that important linkage. Um, that important linkage. Uh, we did have uh, a side session on the uh, process and consultation mechanism uh, that was hosted by uh, our WIS chair for, I believe, uh, His Excellency Minister from Nigeria is supposed to be joining us, uh, Minister. Issa, and we want to thank him for his very uh, able and capable leadership of the. 2020. So let me assure you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, of our commitment to this process and the multi-stakeholder collaboration that's really uh, at the core of, of this effort. Uh, ITU will continue to coordinate very actively with our UN partners in support of the overall review of the WISP outcome generally, as you all that, that overall uh, is expected to be 2025. Uh, so with that, I will, uh, I will end my remarks and hand the floor back to Gitanjali. Thank you. And uh, like you mentioned, uh, this when private sector government Thank you so much. Uh, so they um, are next. Uh, our uh, with Spencer. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Mel, all work together to ensure that uh, gender diversity. And uh, uh, now uh, I'd like to a bit that uh, we will have like a short session with our panelists where. About some of the updates, relevant updates. Uh, I will then present you preparation and we will open up the floor. Uh, we do have time, uh, organizers, to that we could continue. Uh, then, one. So, uh, I'd like to check if uh, excellent, uh, uh, excellent with us uh, from Nigeria. Uh, okay, I have got a message that he was summoned by the president. So he has sent a video. So I'm not sure if the technical of the video. Uh, could you play it if you already have it? In the meanwhile, we could uh, invite Dr. A very close partner, uh, UNESCO, uh, to amend the process. Uh, thank you so much for us today. Thank you very much, dear Doreen. Excellency. Honorable Parliament, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, very pleased to be this. 
ahead of the past 20 very important topic for all of us. Actually, ESCO General Conference asked us to submit ahead of it meetings next year. That's 22 report. So this it does concern all of us, because the UN system and beyond of course, all the states involved. I'm very much confident that the action line is uh, will will continue. Forward looking, ESCO is in charge of an action lines, and of course, they are very when secretary roadman. If you allow me, I would like maybe to share with you a few examples what we have done as UNESCO as a country action line on, on the access dimension. And for Doreen, mentioned and the uh, some of you are aware of uh, UNESCO X Dynamic Coalition X and Internet Universality Rome for are not familiar with it R O A M standing for rights open accessible and multi state digital so that's one 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 country. Uh, on uh, artificial intelligence, you may know that just a year ago, 193 have adopted the UNESCO recommendation on the ethics of AI. It's the first of its kind normative instrument uh, in the world looking at the ethics of AI. In terms of open science, again, a year ago, there was another UNESCO recommendation on open science. Very important. Make uh, uh, to, to implement open data and to ensure open access to scientific knowledge, which can benefit many member states in less developed or developing member states. On education, you may have heard of the transfer, which was by the UN Secretary General. UNESCO was an agency in the Transforming Education Summit. He hosted the pre summit in Paris at UNESCO with 150 ministers. But I believe this is very important as, as part of this and also as part of the SD education with SDG. How can, how can we leverage digital, the future of learning, the future? And I can talk for hours about this being a former academic man. And we know this a paradigm shift way we can leverage logical capital in terms of culture just two months ago we had mundia cool which is the world's largest conference cultural this conference did not take place for 40 years. we were able to organize it last september in mexico and we had 135 million cultures part of it uh, and let me here mention two other elements in digital and culture Certainly, digital can definitely advance linguistic diversity, multilingualism. The opening have more language because that will help bridge the, the, the digital divide. If if people find the, the language they master, they available on the internet. So to say, tough luck if you don't French, English, Spanish languages. So we uh, we try, we are trying to do our part to linguistic diversity we just uh, we are in the process of launching the UNESCO World Atlas language it is a repository of over 8,000 languages many of which are threatened of ex extinction for us it's one way of safeguarding them making them available to and this coming uh, December 13th we launching the international decade on indigenous languages 2020, 2030, a decade long effort by UNESCO, but in cooperation with others, including the Office of High Commission, but also the UN DESA are very much involved with us, but we are the leader. Implement international decade on languages. And maybe finally, as far as uh, media is concerned, I mentioned yesterday in 
arcs. I mentioned uh, that we are trying to contribute to the discussion as far as the regulation of uh, digital play that includes the public goods and not information a public hazard or becoming a public harm. How to regulate digital platforms while safeguarding these people? That this is fully an inclusive multi stake including our 193 all society and geo academia research, but also very important involving the technology company. What is the aim here? Come up with global model regulatory framework for digital that could inform member national law and hopefully the commitment and engagement of tech companies we can have for the first time such a global battery combat by cyber bull online harassment and so on. This conference will be February third, twenty twenty and you party this. Let me conclude by saying that more than sharing the vision of by of course wanting some action lines allocated by contributing with the other UN organizations and other stakeholders to obviously hopefully have a positive review being asked who were there in two five some of us were but can take a stock of what has been achieved and what remains to be done after 20 uh, and mark if so again uh, we look forward to collaborating with all of you i want to stress again our commitment at UNS and to make sure also that we are here for people centered human rights based development oriented uh, and as it was said yesterday technology is a means to the end technology but an end people can get the best out of them thank you all thank you dr jalasi uh, of course unesco very very content as well uh, culture takes media access <laughs> learning so it's a whole range uh, and in fact uh, a long time back uh, uh, decided that it's the, not only ID, but in should be called WSIK with the knowledge societies. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we would like to check if go from the Nigeria is and if you the ITU secretary general Edich, my sister and the Ayo lady, her excellency Dori. The Assistant Director General of uh, UNESCO, my brother Dr. Topic Jelassi, and also the head of uh, the e commerce and digital economy branch of UNCTAD, Mr. Trump John, also my sister Jelantani, uh, other respected personalities here. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to all of you, depending on from where you are listening to me. Permit me to begin by commending the effort of our stakeholders for organizing the WISIS Open Consultation Forum for 2023. This is indeed very commendable to begin the preparation on time so that we will be able to make it a very successful one. As the chairman of uh, WISIS 2022, it is my pleasure to ensure that I give all the necessary support towards achieving a very successful WISIS 2023. Furthermore, the, uh, the theme of uh, the 2023 is very apt because it deals with uh, accelerating the sustainable development goals of uh, the United Nations which to me is very important to ensure 
so that the programs we organize are in alignment with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Furthermore, ICT and digital economy are still very relevant in the world. Not only relevant, by the day they are becoming necessary for a very successful life. Today, ICT is a necessity in our healthcare, necessity in our education, necessity towards our economic growth and development, necessity towards our day-to-day -day activities. The world population is increasing by the day. According to the United Nations, the world population hit 8 billion on the 15th of November 2022, meaning just this month. By implication, it becomes necessary to redouble our effort so that we will be able to ensure that we bridge the gap that exists between unserved serve on one hand and those of us who have the privilege of the other. I do hope that we will have a very successful discussion in this open consultation process towards a very successful WCIS 2023. Thank you very much for listening. All my doors are open and I do hope we will continue to keep in touch and also accept my apologies for my inability to be with you physically. I plan to be with you physically, but the president of my country has given me another international assignment in which I have been directed to ensure I deliver within this period. Do accept my apologies. I wish it was a very successful deliberation. And I have my team with you physically in Addis Ababa, and I do hope that the team will be able to represent me effectively for any physical discussion and any action that is required from our angle, we are willing to deliver it. Good, uh, thank you very much for listening. Bye. Thank you so much, X. And we miss you uh, not being here with us, but uh, uh, you're definitely here in spirit. Thank you for your leadership, guidance, uh, always identifying the key trends, opportunities, challenges action lines uh, we are very thankful for your uh, guidance process um i'd like to now move on to um, uh, our uh, co-hosts actually uh, UNE. uh over to you thank you very much uh Analyst amplifying I will cover a few points intensively time before follow up questions. Let me start by underlining digital and climate resilience. World very much at the center and the most change will that's based on on a held this looking at some of the The framework also have the one of the bill also see all 
also policy. We are really on infrastructure at Pressing the infrastructure of original key. That also coupled with largest access in India. The context of capacity building. And fortunately, access to nutrition is work <coughs> skills. Part of the Complemented by our work, regions, continent approach established in Congo, which aims to connect by artificial private sector. He also complement Conclude slide, which is economic gender I would like to Thank you so much, uh, Jean-Paul, and thank you for the commitment of uh, you today. Um, you are the vice chair of uh, UNJ right now and also the chair of the WISIS uh, Regional Commission. Uh, we are very thankful for your uh, commitment, uh, our focus point, Maktar, uh, and also our colleague uh, from Jiva, who is now here with you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much uh, for your help. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of our regional for Africa. And thank you us uh we now like to go on to um uh, 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 uh 
uh, I hope I pronounced it properly. Um, uh, excellent. Uh, you have been a gender trendsetter. Uh, you have highlighted a very, very important cause of online uh, violence so that we are able to uh, and to create platforms for partnership work towards that eradication of online gender violence. So uh, over to you, excellent. Share some of our plans. Uh, Um, thank you very much. And I'm very that Madam and and my team. I think also a lady. <laughs> Um, so, um, so as interested, I'm a member of the African the House. We have policy uh, up in the how how we are here. In our numbers. We have an MP South. I can show your hands. We have an MP here from South Sudan. MP from. Kenya, from Ghana, from Zimbabwe, MP from MP from Uganda, MP from Eswati, Botswana, Cameroon, Nigeria, Zambia, and Tanzania. So we have MPs here from one, two, I see. Twelve countries. Um, and others are in others. And I think this is the first of having African at this point. That had been um, often discussions at Obo, Obo dialogues, they about legislation, but ourselves, yet they were seeing things at us that politicians are doing. Well. But those very same Asian are not part of the. Come together as African parliamentarians and form African um, on governance. We have 36 five African countries, and we're making sure that at the moment, um, West, South, as well as making sure that within members of APNIC, there is party as well as from opposition, that even within ourselves, ourselves on check. Uh, like for example, your person party, my country, and our secretary, I'm George, you can that they can know who is he's from the opposition in Ghana. So we, we have a struggle and we keep each other in check, which is good and healthy. Um now when it comes to WISIS, this year for the first time, um through the support of Gitangeli, we were able to have a small round table online parliamentarians and what we are hoping for and this is appeal i bring i bring here on the table particularly it go um unca to make sure that this time we can have a parliamentarian session physical in 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 geneva because there is a difference of having people there and discussing and liaising with the different um participants vis-a-vis -vis being it done online um, some of the issues, when you look at the WISIS action lines, the 15 WISIS action lines, I think parliamentarians play a role towards accelerating the implementation of those, acts, of those action lines. But you will find that a lot of us as parliamentarians, we're not very aware of what is this thing called WISIS. Because, again, of the lack of participation of parliamentarians over time. So, so one of the things that perhaps we can be doing as a preparation towards WISIS next year is to have a, you know, a targeted a capacity building session on WISIS, whereby we go through the, the, the action lines and we understand where are we in terms of implementation, where are we lacking, and what can parliament do towards accelerating that, the implementation of those items. Um, the second item is... We, we we have kind of identified areas that we feel we can prioritize going forward, and perhaps some of these can inform the discussions in WISIS. 
Um, the year 2024 has been pegged as the election year. We have over 75 elections globally and over 20 elections here in Africa. So we want to champion the issue of digital democracy. And, 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 and I think the WSIS would be a good, uh, a good platform also to, to, to start that discussion in terms of how can we ensure that you know, we, the online space doesn't, doesn't um, create room for distortion, misinformation that impacts democracy, that impacts the participation of citizens towards democratic, um, democratic things. But at the same time, issues of artificial intelligence in a lot of African countries, artificial intelligence is still unknown. There's still fear that artificial intelligence will take jobs. And we as a continent have a huge youth unemployment issue. So all of those things we need to discuss. And, and as parliamentarians, we would like to be able to be capacitated so that we can champion having kind of model laws in our own respect, respective countries so that for once we should not be reactive, but we can be proactive. The other issue that we'd also like to bring um, into place is the issue of rural connectivity. I'm looking at the last mile connectivity, and it is very critical that when we're discussing issues of connectivity to look at it holistically. We need to look at the issues of infrastructure, that is electricity, but we need to look at the issues of just the mobile network. I come from Kagera, we are bordering Rwanda, Burundi, and Uganda. Now in parts of my district, I cannot get connected to the Tanzanian mobile networks, but I, get, I can get a signal from N MTN in Rwanda. So that is a challenge. And when we're talking about connectivity, if, and because we are a bordering region, it means there's a huge opportunity for e-commerce. There's a huge op opportunity for doing business, cross-border business. But if I'm, I'm at the border, I cannot get access to my own country network, but I can get the neighboring country network. That is a challenge that we need to address. But at the same time, we all have the UCSA funds in our, in our different countries. Mobile network companies don't want to come to places like where I'm from because it doesn't make business sense for them. So what can we do to make it attractive for them to come? Because otherwise, we're going to talk about this digital inclusion, but it's not going to be realized in reality. And the majority of the people are in the rural. You know, the, we just had census, and my region is a number six in terms of population. So in terms of also as a politically, it's a good number of votes. So we want to get those people connected. You know, I want to see, I want my people to see me here in Ethiopia talking in this amazing panel, but how can they see me if they're not connected? So that's challenge issue. But then the other challenge is the digital literacy. We need to come up with targeted campaign for making sure people understand how to use these gadgets, digital literacy, digital skills. You know, it's very good taking computers to schools, but do our teachers know how to use the computers? We're talking about digital health. Do our health practitioners know how to use these things. We're talking about having data protection acts in place, data protection mechanisms in place. But do the people in the rural know how to navigate through these things? Most of us have smartphones. But I tell you, you come to my where, where the region that I'm from, even if you send a link to, if you tell someone go to YouTube, they don't know how to go to YouTube. You need to give them the link, they press the link, it takes them to YouTube. That's a problem. So how are we going to address these things? And, and I feel this is the importance of getting parliamentarians to the table because we can bring out issues that are, that are challenging the people that we represent as opposed as, yes, governments are all representing us, but they also have their own priorities. And sometimes this last mile connectivity, our countries are big. We don't have enough uh, funding. Everybody is scrambling around from the, for the, the little funding that is there. So what can we do to make sure that we, we we represent the voice of the people on the ground. And this is where I think having on board parliamentarians becomes critical because each one of us can represent the voice of the people. And, the, and I believe with this, the UN, we, we need to focus on the last mile. Um, finally, is the issue of girls and women. We have to make sure there is a huge gender divide, uh, gender digital divide. And as a WSIS gender trendsetter, um, I, can, I can confidently say one of the things that will continue to expand this digital gender divide is the online abuse. It is something that is not being addressed enough, but it is something that is horrific. I don't think any of you in this room would want to be in my shoes as a 
female parliamentarian. The abuse that we endure, some of my Tanzanian colleagues are here, maybe they can attest to it. The abuse that I endure online is horrific. But we persevere because if we don't, then it has a very bad impact. And the impact is on two folds. One, everybody is trying to say that we need to get more girls and women in leadership positions. Now imagine an aspiring girl, Emma Lugangira, this powerful female politician who can sit here. But when you're abused, you're helped. And you can't do anything. Yes, there is a cyber law, but it's not clear. How can you get your right? And this brings me to another issue. And I'm here, I'm really trying not to get emotional here, but um, this brings to the issue of freedom of expression. Freedom of expression is also used as a blanket to abuse which is not expressed enough. We talk about freedom of expression. We champion and advocate for freedom of expression, but we forget one critical thing. You should not use your freedom of expression to make me not use my freedom of expression. So I'll give you an example. In the Tanzanian parliament, we have 143 female members. Less than 10% are online. Let that sink in, less than 10% are because of their Yet, talking about bridging and the difference. So we need to address the issue of online abuse. And unfortunately, when women in politics are being abused online, nobody comes to the defense, even the human rights defense. Because you want to know why? They say if you get into politics, you should have thick skin. You should take it. Or you should be able to accept criticism. And what I say, we're not afraid of criticism. Criticize the agenda, not the gender. So my appeal to all of you, and particularly to our SP, curb the issue of online abuse. And we need to find ways to get the social media platforms to have the right social responsibility because they're also benefiting from this abuse. It's giving them ratings and somehow they must be benefiting monetarily. But how do we get to sit on the same table with these social media platforms and express to this to them? So on my closing, I'm very grateful to be here. I'm very grateful to get this opportunity. And it is my hope this will be the beginning to many, a beginning to a lot of such engagements, a beginning to giving us this opportunity of Global South parliamentarians coming on global, global settings such as this and expressing the challenges that we're enduring towards making Africa and globally to be you know, digital. One of the ambitions of the African Parliamentary Network on Internet Governance is to accelerate and strengthen the role of parliamentarians, African parliamentarians in digital development. We are, we are a market of over 1.5 billion and we are growing, but because of our lack of regulatory frameworks, we are being taken advantage of in a lot of ways, and in particular in the digital space. So we need your help so that we can also do our part and collaborate together. Forgive me if I've taken a little bit of time, uh, but thank you very much for this opportunity and I'm truly humbled um, to be here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Excellency Nima. Uh, your, your passion is uh, always so infectious uh, and uh, we'll make sure that uh, we will do things together. There are many people in this room who are eager to work with us on the issues that you have uh, highlighted. 
us. I can see Doreen is also nodding. So we will be working very closely with you on all these issues. Um, I would now like to uh, really appreciate Mr. Michael Hoden for being with us since 4 a.m. New York time. Thank you so much, uh, Mike, uh, for again, a very passionate person on ICTs and older persons. Uh, we've managed to have uh, our VISIS track on ICTs and older persons reflected on the uh, UN resolution on aging. So this is a great achievement uh, for our partnership with UN DESA, WHO, GCOA. Over to you, Mike, to please present some of the things we are doing and our plans for 2023. Thank you, Gitanjali. Uh, we're delighted to be here. Uh, the Global Coalition on Aging, representing the business voice in the aging space and a part of our uh, great work over the last uh, three to four years uh, with WISIS. Uh, let me open by, uh, as others, congratulating Madam Secretary General on your new appointment, your new election. Uh, it's wonderful. We look forward to working with you and the rest of ITU and WISIS. Uh, I'll, I'll just mention three or four uh, points uh, around this aging space, as it were. Uh, number one, uh, I'd like us to think of this as the glass half full, not half empty. Here in our 21st century, we have reached a milestone that for the history of humanity has been unimaginable. The prospect of growing old becoming the norm. It is the norm everywhere on the planet. Uh, we need to get it even more so in many countries around the world. Uh, but it is the case that we today have a billion of us over 60 that over the next couple of decades will become 2 billion as some of my former uh, colleague speakers said, this in itself is a marketplace for many products and services, including digital technology. The 2 billion people marketplace over 60. Think of it that way, no matter where, what you're developing or approaching. Secondly, is that this milestone of longevity is largely a function of 20th century innovation. Innovation in sanitation, innovation in biomedicine, innovation in technology. And through the work of ITU and WISIS, we wanna continue that, including and particularly around technology. Over the last two years, and now for 2023, we've been uh, proud and delighted to partner on a variety of uh, topics. Uh, one is we've had the creation of the Healthy Aging Innovation Prize. Uh, last year, we had over 120 submissions uh, in tens and tens of countries around the world. Uh, this year, we are going to open it up. We have opened it up, and we expect even more. Uh, secondly, to highlight, uh, Gitangelo, we already said that this is profoundly connected to the decade of healthy aging. Uh, it is a decade that represents the recognition of our reaching this longevity, but also that in every, every society as it modernizes, there are more old than young. Um, thirdly, I would point out that we can continue to make a difference in the lives of all of us, including uh, older adults around the planet. Uh, number one, uh, what is our digital home look like? Uh, what can it be, whether we're talking about uh, a digital home with respect to healthcare or a digital home with respect to applications of, uh, for example, uh, streaming services. But we have to have all of it and we have to have it everywhere. Uh, number two, that we have, uh, particularly in 2023, we can have a cross-generational approach. What is the relationship in, at WISIS between our uh, older adult uh, track, which we now have full, fully entrenched, and our youth track, and how can we work together on all sides? Uh, and then thirdly, um, how do we make a difference with respect to the application of disease? Uh, we recently had a Silver Economy Forum. Uh, Gitanjali and uh, the WISIS team were there. Thank you very much. And uh, we identified a variety of areas. One good example is the application of technology in bone health. We know who 80% 
of those with the first fracture are. And through digital technology, we can help identify them and then treat and rehabilitate. That will be huge so that we can bring bone health to the diseases of aging uh, solutions as we're trying to do in so many other areas, whether it's cardiovascular health, uh, we apply to caregiving uh, and for example, Alzheimer's. So we're delighted to work with you again in 2023. Uh, we will open up our uh, Healthy Aging Innovation Prize to all. And uh, we look for new areas of work, including uh, with the youth track. Thank you very much. We are delighted. And again, thank, thank you to Madam Secretary for your new election. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. Uh, thank you for all these new, uh, uh, very important topics in the area of aging that uh, you have highlighted, uh, especially uh, role of ICTs with Alzheimer's, uh, with frailty, uh, digital uh, ac economic access, so uh, e-business e for older persons, financial transactions for older persons using technology. So we'll be dealing with all these topics uh, in the track uh, with uh, all our partners. Thank you very much. Uh, I see that Scarlett and Mailing have been waiting very, very patiently. Uh, Scarlett is our co-organizer, uh, Ungtad. Uh, uh, Scarlett, the floor is over to you. Thank you very much, Kitanjali. Um, um, I just wanted to uh, say to distinguished panelists, colleagues, and friends on behalf of Ungtad, I would like to convey um, our regret that we could not be with you in Addis to launch this all important open consultation for the WISIS Forum 2023. But it's great to see that you have a packed room and you've already had a very passionate interventions uh, explaining what is important to you about uh, sh what should be discussed in the uh, World Summit on the Information Society Forum. As you know, at UNCTAD, we bring to WISIS the perspective of the digital economy, which is evolving at record speed, uh, boosted uh, by the COVID-19 pandemic. And during the past couple of years, we have seen a surge in the use of e-commerce and digital trade. Some increases have been truly mind-boggling. For example, between 2017 and 2021, the share of people in Mongolia who shopped online rose from 7 to 42 percent. And in Thailand, it rose from 17 to 51 percent. At the same time, many countries and businesses with lower levels of digital readiness have struggled to harness digital solutions for economic resilience. We have therefore been reminded of both the enormous potential of digital transformation as well as the significant risks of widening digital divides and inequalities. The WISIS Forum offers a rare opportunity for all stakeholders and all countries to come together and examine progress towards achieving an inclusive and sustainable digital economy and society. And we look forward to contributing uh, from that lens. The 2023 edition will be a timely occasion to also consider the role of digitalization for all of the sustainable development goals. Um, because as you know, the clock is ticking and uh, we have the planned UN summit of the future in 2024, as well as the review of WISTIS Plus 20. So we encourage all stakeholders to use this open consultation process to feed in your views and ideas that can help shape the WISIS Forum 2023 to make it as useful as possible, especially in the current juncture. So together with the ITU, UNESCO and UNDP, UNCTAD looks forward to hearing from you and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Scarlett, uh, also the lead facilitating agency for uh, e-business along with uh, UP and ITC. Thank you for your commitment towards the process. Uh, of course, uh, we've saved the best for the last. Thank you for your patience, Melin. Uh, Melin has been our mentor, friend, philosopher, and guide uh, in terms of the uh, whole digital gender inclusion process. Uh, we've initiated an online versus uh, gender repository, uh, the versus gender trendsetters. We've been able to achieve a lot together. Uh, over to you, Melin, to uh, share some of the activities uh, we've done and our plans for 2023. Uh, thank you, Katanjali, and I've uh, given a copy of my remarks in the 
chat as well. Um, I'm the chair of the People Centered Internet and a proud Mrs. Gender Trendsetter, but I'm also the godmother of CRM, the Customer Relationship Management. So I've been in technology, they call me old school tech. I chair the IEEE Society for the Social Implications of Technology, Technical Committee for Sustainability. And um, recently I co-chaired the UN uh, Commission on the Status of Women 67th session on the theme of digital innovation. I want to focus my remarks on where women can play a role. Digital, digital affects workplaces, homes, sports, social life. It's coming into every aspect of human life for those who can afford it. And for those who cannot, the digital divide must be bridged or sectors of society will not be full participants in the future and with the possibility of future social unrest. With all these opportunities and dangers that we face, what can we do? A renowned leader uh, said at the time of the most severe crisis his country had faced, a civil war. This is what he said. We can only succeed, we can succeed only by concert. It is not, can any of us imagine better, but can we all do better? The dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. The occasion is piled high with difficulty and we must rise with the occasion. As our case is new, so we must think anew and act anew, said Abraham Lincoln in 1861. We have to go beyond acknowledging that women have an important role to play in shaping the future. We are 50% of humanity. Women can drive the setting up of future frameworks for digital innovation. With a woman as the first ITU Secretary General <laughs> to be a woman, bravo Doreen Bogdan Martin, we can rise to this occasion and demand that digital serves humanity and stewards the planet. Physics as a science needed physics labs. So digital needs labs for developing policy, for developing collaborative regulation that serves the people and the planet. So what kind of labs are we talking about? Community living learning labs, so we can begin to understand the consequences and long-term impact of digital interventions and digital innovations. We need, as the Secretary General of the United Nations said, we have to harness the power of digital technologies, but we have to minimize the harms. We have to do this systematically, collaboratively, in a coordinated way. We need to call for regional collaboration on regulatory sandboxes for digital. Each country is dealing with their own election cycles, but if we have regional sandboxes, this effort can continue to do these labs, even as different um, elected officials uh, move, move through. So we must do this with participation by all, using technology like conversational AI not to automate existing jobs, but to do the jobs that have never been done, that need to be done, to get direct real-time feedback from the people so that we continually improve our designs, our processes, our policies, and our regulations. This is what the tech companies are doing. They're doing it at speed and scale, and we must do it for our policies and regulations. Only then can we make sure that digital innovation is for the people, by the people, and with the people. Only then can we assure equal opportunity for prosperity for future generations. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Malin. Um, so we're running out of time. Uh, what I'll do is I'll very quickly go through the presentation and then it will be available online. Those of you who want the presentation can also write to us at visis-info at the rate of itu.int. And so could you please put the presentation online and then we'll open up the floor uh, for 15 minutes. So very quickly, uh, so colleagues, this is not working. 
Next slide, please. Yes, so we've been through the VISIS process timeline, uh, the new stakeholders here, uh, I can see many new faces. Uh, we started in 1998 uh, uh, with uh, the plenipotentiary conference in Minneapolis, and uh, then uh, it resulted in a UN General Assembly resolution in 2001, uh, which, uh, which tasked the UN to have a summit in two phases, which Doreen and Mr. Jalasi was talking about uh, in 2000. Uh, uh, it was held in Geneva and in uh, 2003 and in Tunis in 2005. So you can see that in 2015, when the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development was adopted, we started aligning the WISIS process with the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and we've uh, we have a mapping. It's called a VISIS SDG matrix, which is available online. Uh, UN agencies involved like FAO, ILO, WHO, ITU, UNESCO. We've all worked together to map and show how different uh, action lines actually connected to the sustainable development goals. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Doreen already mentioned this. Uh, Next slide, please. Yes, so please mark 13 to 17th of March on your calendars. Uh, and at the request of stakeholders, we will continue the virtual component in April and May. Uh, 13th to 17th will be a hybrid model uh, in Geneva and virtual. Uh, as you know, next slide, the agenda uh, and the program of the VISIS Forum is built through an open consultative process. This is our first meeting. Uh, the second meeting will be on 13th of January. Uh, hybrid again, uh, Geneva physical and with virtual participation. Next slide, please. Uh, it's a very simple way to input your submission, go online, create your account and submit uh, your official input to the OCP process. Next slide, please. Uh, we will have a high level track uh, our chairman uh, current chairman will uh, change uh, in uh, during the visis forum uh, we will have uh, high level policy sessions uh, ministerial roundtable high level dialogues ambassador briefings mayors roundtable that we started last year uh, have high level meeting with parliamentarians we hope that all the parliamentarians present here will be working with us uh, because at present we we really need your ideas and guidance as to what we could do for an impact. Um, next slide, please. Uh, we do have several special tracks. Uh, I think the next slide covers that uh, on gender, youth, uh, ICTs and older persons, uh, ICTs and LDCs, ICTs and indigenous languages. We have a special prize on ICTs and indigenous languages as well. Uh, in 2023, we're going to launch it soon. Uh, Michael Hoden spoke about the uh, uh, prize, special prize on older persons. Uh, we're doing a lot of work on clean technologies. Uh, Giacomo is also sitting here. We'll be working with you on that as well uh, so uh, colleagues I think uh, I'll stop here because we really want to listen from you uh, we will leave this presentation uh, with the IGF secretariat so that you can get it from them and from us uh, as well at uh, visis wsis dash info info at the rate of itu.int so thank you so much and the floor is open uh, do we see any hands uh, raised we are Okay, yes, sir. Please uh, do introduce yourself first. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Winston Donko. I'm from Ghana, Executive Director for Africa Open Day and Internet Research Fund. I have some few things to share. First one is um, <clears throat> um, having looking at Africa and the issues that we have. First issue that I would say um, based on the availability of data. If some amount of effort can go into addressing the data gaps that we have in uh, Africa, uh, that will go a long way to help us. The other issue uh, that I think uh, is also of importance is um, spectrum allocation like the spectrum allocation that we have this continent uh, mostly rivers the, 
the big companies, the big telcos, and then leaving out uh, uh, the the smaller ones. Example, uh, we have several non-governmental organizations that want to go into the rural community and help them solve their problem uh, in terms of uh, connectivity issues. But then uh, getting some of those uh, spectrum allocations is difficult. And then we all know that the big companies um, don't find it profitable going into the rural uh, community. And then most times, uh, you know, control. So we need to look at that and see how we can help uh, our community. Thank you, sir. Any more raised hands? Yes, please. My name is uh, Naza Nicholas Kirama, currently serving as the uh, president of uh, Tanzania chapter, uh, Internet Society Tanzania chapter, and also the project manager for the Tanzania Digital Inclusion Program. Uh, if they, I think in WISIS you you say uh, trendsetter. If you are to call me a trendsetter, well, I'm a trendsetter in uh, connectivity. And um, uh, one of the item that I believe uh, should uh, come to the forum are the use cases on the ground. If the connectivity is a, is a challenge. I mean, what is happening uh, in countries on the ground? Um, I'm saying this because um, if you get uh, a use case, a good use case of connectivity um, from Ghana, for instance, or from uh, Georgia, it is uh, easier to adopt and to adapt what has been done on the ground. For example, um, in Tanzania, what we have been able to achieve is uh, actually connecting schools and health centers. And I think for the first time, the local police station to a broadband internet through a community organized uh, uh, community, uh, digital innovation. So my, uh, uh, my suggestion or my sub submission will be to have all these uh, use cases um, from around the world to ensure that uh, they come and exhibit or demonstrate what is it that they are doing on the ground and it is working. Um, because if we are talking about you know, connecting uh, all people, uh, including all schools from the Global Digital Compact. We need to see those um, uh, uh, you know, organizations or individuals that are walking the talk. So others can also be able to um, uh, take from the from forum to implement in their own countries. Thank you also for uh, allowing me to participate in a high track uh, level session last year. And it was wonderful, and I got a lot of uh, um, uh, emails, and some people are actually implementing what we are doing in Tanzania. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. It was our pleasure. Uh, I see that Nigel had raised his hand, and then uh, Excellency from Ghana, and then we need to give a chance to the online participants as well. Uh, Nigeria. Uh, sorry, uh, Nigel, <laughs> over to you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Gitanjali and Nig Nig Nigel Hickson uh, from the uh, UK government. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the red lights on. Uh, yeah, it might be part of the aging process, but uh, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> very briefly, first of all, thank you so much for hosting this this session. Uh, the commitment of the UK to to, to the WISIS process and to the WISIS forum, I think is 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 something that you know the inspiring speeches uh, that we've heard this morning uh, uh, is based on. I mean, the WISIS forum has shown the WISIS process has shown how stakeholders can come together to 
try and solve issues, to understand each other, to share experiences, to share concerns, to share joy, to share achievements. And it's testament to, uh, to the ITU and to colleagues, uh, their colleagues in UNCTAD and UNESCO and other agencies, UN, ECA, that we're able to do this at the, at the WISIS Forum every year, and uh, we should be grateful for that. The UK is committed to this process, and we'll certainly be uh, supporting, I hope, we will we'll be supporting financially next year, and we'll be committed to the process, and hopefully we'll have our minister uh, being able to take part next year. And I think, you know, to, to, just to finish, it's, as we go towards the renewal if you like, or to the debate at the UNGA on the WISIS process in, 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 in itself. I think we need, to, uh, we need to show, as we do in the WISIS forum, that all stakeholders, that this is so important that stakeholders have a forum to come together to talk about how, how we're doing on the action lines. Perhaps in 2025, we might be able to adopt more ambitious action lines and update them in lines of the of the important issues that uh, the parliamentarians and others have brought to the table today. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Nigel, for your personal commitment and also for UK's support to the uh, WISIS process. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, you wanted the floor. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Honorable Sam George from Ghana, and I'm excited to see the, the presentation you just showed. It had a high level session for parliamentarians because on the WISIS website, it didn't have parliamentarians as part of your high level track. And that for me was a critical problem because when I look at your action lines, um, and, and this is from someone who served in government and now in opposition, um, basically what we see that your action lines are, are election manifesto promises. So, so basically we, we use those things as infrastructure to win elections. But the real practicality and the effect on the people can only be done through parliament. Because serving in the executive, when I looked at WISIS action lines, I looked at how many communities could I have a project that will connect them to rural connectivity. I didn't care about whether those in those communities would actually afford the connectivity that we gave. Because in the next election manifesto, uh, uh, calendar, we could say we've connected 300 communities. So we're, we're, we, our ministers will come to the WISIS meeting and say, we are doing well. But now as an MP who represents a, an actual constituency, I'm not just interested in how, in how we're connected. How I, I think my government is not too excited about what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. N now that I have an actual constituency that elects me and and i i answer to and not sitting there by virtue of an appointment by a president i'm worried about my constituents being able to actually afford the connectivity and that's where the real impact of what we says as action lines will be and so i'm happy that we're going to see parliamentarians take part in this high level sessions that we can then begin to add impetus so that the WISIS meetings don't become just talk shops especially on the african continent where our ministers come sit in these high-level sessions, sign up to things, but then the real impact of WISIS, that the action plans are not felt on the continent. So thank you and kudos to you for adding the parliamentarian track. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Actually, the reason you don't see it uh, there is because we are still developing uh, what we should be doing in that track. So all these comments are very useful uh, and we will probably have another meeting uh, to coordinate this activity better. Uh, thank you. We'll take some online uh, questions and colleagues. Uh, we do have the room here. So those of you who have time can stay with us. But those of you who have to leave, we will understand. Um, Andrash, online Ambassador Andrash is our partner uh, from the Geneva Cities Hub. Uh, he introduced the mayor's component uh, with the city of Geneva. Over to you, Ambassador Andras, if you would like to make an intervention. Thank you very much, Kitanjali. Good, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, depending on where you are. Uh, I'm Andras Sereni uh, from the Geneva Cities Hub, and we had the pleasure and the honor to work with the VCS Forum uh, last year uh, to launch 
the participation of uh, local and regional uh, governments, uh, the participation of mayors uh, at the Oasis Forum. Um, we are very happy to continue this uh, uh, collaboration because we believe that this initiative uh, on behalf of VISIS to include uh, this constituency is very important and it's in line uh, with our common agenda uh, launched by the UN Secretary General uh, where we really uh, acknowledge the importance uh, of a broad base of multilateralism, a real multi-stakeholder approach which was always a signature of the VISIS uh, project. Uh, next year, uh, we, we also uh, plan to involve uh, mayors uh, from all regions uh, of, of the globe. Uh, urbanization is uh, a very important challenge. Uh, and uh, uh, as we saw with the uh, sustainable development goals, uh, we can only reach uh, a result if we localize uh, our impact. Uh, and this is the same, uh, I believe, uh, with the uh, VCS action lines in harmony of the uh, sustainable development goals that we have to involve uh, those actors uh, who uh, are closest to the citizens, in that case, the mayors uh, and local authorities, uh, and with them together, uh, similarly to parliamentarians we just heard, uh, with the mayors together, uh, we can have a real impact on the ground. So once again, thank you for the possibility to collaborate. We are looking forward to it. Uh, and uh, we are very uh, happy to be a partner uh, of uh, the VCS project. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ambassador. Uh, we look forward to working towards uh, a good engagement, uh, also linking it with smart cities, uh, the work that ITOT is also doing very actively. So thank you so much. Uh, we would now like to move on to Professor uh, Vladimir Minkin. Uh, he's also online. Uh, Professor Minkin, over to you. Yes, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Good, good afternoon, uh, dear colleague. Uh, congratulate you with uh, IGF and uh, the first open consultation uh, for preparation to this forum. Uh, this is forum, uh, as many people already stress, is a multi-stakeholder platform for discussing all items and especially uh, concerning the Geneva phase of action. I participated in both of them. And uh, this is forum uh, give chance for us uh, to start in preparation uh, for uh, 2025, because 23 and 24 visas forums is practically 20 years uh, after the Geneva phase. And uh, uh, we should look how we, we should estimate how we reach action lines globally and regionally, uh, what are uh, the success, uh, where we have challenges, and uh, how to strengthen the cooperation and to help uh, the achieving uh, SDGs up to 2030. It means uh, this is maybe necessary to uh, prolong for that, but it's for discussing 2025. And of course, I fully support Nigel that we should be ready for considering what should be this is beyond 2025, what will be new challenges based on new technology and uh, new surrounding and, and so on. Thank you very much. I, I wish you success for that. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Menken. Uh... I see that a hand is raised both uh, virtually and physically over to you, sir. So. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, the, the short note is actually uh, listed to uh, Jean-Paul on the academic. I see that we have lots of high levels, but I feel that the academics are underrepresented. As being professor at the University of Oslo and thus member of the European a research intensive university alliance called the Guild, where we have an agreement with Arua, the African Research University uh, alli Alliances, I would think that that is a perfect starting point for getting the competence building at the universities be um, better out. And together with NEMA and, uh, and NASA, we have built regional competence centers at, amongst others, uh, Dar es Salaam University. 
or involving students in connecting schools and communities. And that example has actually resulted that some of the students with these practical experiences found immediately their place in business where exactly these practical skills of connecting the last mile and connecting uh, the future were addressed. So we can follow up later on. Thank you so much. Uh, I think you also attended the uh, Academia Roundtable that we had at Visis Forum. We plan to continue that and we look forward to your support on how to you know, continue with it. So thank you. Uh, I think, uh, Vladimir, if you could please help us with some virtual participants who are there uh, online. Yes. yes, thank you, Gitanjali, and hello to everyone. Uh, before I uh, report on some um, chat uh, questions uh, and information shared, I would like to invite uh, Elliot Christian, who also raised his hand, to take the floor. Uh, thank you very much. So I just have a quick comment, which is that despite today's amazing ICTs, too many people in harm's way still do not get timely and effective emergency alerts. This is especially the case in developing countries. Sadly, these, of course, are the most vulnerable. So an action plan has been put together for that in the next five years to get early warnings to all. This is from the UN Secretary General announced in March. Now his focus was on weather because of the, the climate crisis ongoing, but we should be talking about all hazards and this should be all media. And I mean analog brought over the air, broadcast radio and television are still very prominent, all ICTs, digital, and analog. Thank you. In the chat, I've put some more uh, on this topic. Yes, thank you very much, Elliot. Um, there are other uh, questions um, raised in the chat uh, requiring, uh, you know, more information on the open consultation process. I would like to inform everyone that uh, this presentation that Gitanjali shared and the recording will also be uploaded on the VISIS Forum website in the dedicated page to the open consultation process. Uh, the other calls uh, and deadlines are also available on the VISIS Forum website. Uh, the one question on the VISIS prizes, it is uh, an ongoing call and uh, the deadline is 7th of December. So please take your time, uh, promote this opportunity and uh, submit your projects. We also have our hand raised uh, back to Michael Hoden. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to point out the uh, reference to the mayor's uh, platform uh, might be very interestingly linked uh, with the age-friendly cities uh, work under the decade of healthy aging. And maybe we do something in 2023 with the older person's track and the mayor's through the age-friendly cities work, uh, which we of course covered at our Silver Economy Forum two weeks ago. So that's a, a new and interesting idea that perhaps comes out of today's interaction. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Vladimir. We need to vacate this room, but we have two more people here. Balzur from Bangladesh, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gitanjali. I am ASM Bazlur Rahman, CEO of Bangladesh and News Network for Radio and Communication. We have been involved with the WSIS process since 2000. We are implementing and contributing to the WSIS action line, C1 to C11 in Bangladesh, as a WSIS action line focus organization. As a result, we received eight times WSIS prizes as the winner and also champion. Uh, my question is, UN Secretary General already declared the Global Digital Compact. From the WSIS community, what is our harmonization plan to adopt to the Global Digital Compact? Thank you. Uh, yes, sir, uh, over to you at the end there. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I usually don't raise my hand. I'm very shy in this case. <laughs> my name is Ghayur Bawari. I'm from Afghanistan. I think I'm the only one person from Afghanistan participating in the IGF 2022. Thank you so much for the floor. So now the que my question is that now the Afghanistan is almost isolated from the uh, from the international community from the globe, uh, and also as I see the most of the stakeholders, the participants, the organizers with the versus are uh, very high rank officials, uh, MPs, 
uh, now, uh, like as individuals from Afghanistan, how can we take part and also can be involved uh, with OSS in 2023? Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. All uh, activities at the WISIS process, uh, virtual and physical, are absolutely open and free of cost. So anyone can participate, have a workshop, have an exhibition space. Um, so uh, we can be in touch if you can. I'm circulating a paper around, very old school. So if you could please put your email there, uh, I'll be in touch with you. Uh, over to you, sir. Boruko Mini Taiwo Akiremi. Mowalati Lu Nigeria. Now, do you understand that? Now, so I'm a founder of Africa Rapporteur Network. In order to have local impact, we need to start talking about language barriers. Now, do you understand this now? So I speak in my dialect, but we don't understand. Now, let's go back to our local community. Do they understand English? Most of the languages that we communicate, they don't understand. So how do we address that? We're talking about affordability. We're talking about connectivity. That is not enough. How do we translate this? How do we help African community? How do we ensure that they understand, they participate at the table? How do we ensure that we take that local content, we have local impact in that community? So thank you. Uh, thank you. That's a very important point. Uh, fortunately, we still have Dr. Jalasi with us, uh, UNESCO. Well, thank you for your comment. Uh, I think in my opening remarks, I did mention the crucial importance of making cyberspace as multilingual as possible. I also mentioned the work that UNESCO has been doing to foster linguistic diversity and multilingualism, including in cyberspace. And I mentioned some of the initiatives that we as one organization of the UN has been carrying out. Of course, we need collective efforts by all, including other UN agencies, ITU or UNDESA or, or others. Uh, your point is well taken. And I, I think you made it very clear when you started your intervention, speaking a language that many of us did not understand. This is the case in cyberspace. Thank you so much, Dr. Jalasi. And many of you have this question, what is the deadline for, uh, for binding deadline for requesting for workshops? Uh, it's 1st of February. Uh, we will not accept any uh, requests after 1st because the Secretariat needs to consolidate and give all of you an opportunity. So please do submit them today <laughs> as soon as possible. Madam, uh, please, the floor is yours. Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Sun Fai from the Gambia. IGFU coordinator and also an executive member of the um, Internet Society. Um, basically, looking at the track that has already been mentioned here, I think when we are talking of um, internet and connectivity, it's a fundamental human rights now. Um, I'm glad the gender perspective has really been addressed, and then I saw a lot of work being done and hoping to continue. Um, but also looking at the in inclusiveness of it, people with differently um, able, do we really um, have a track on that. If we don't, then we really need, to, um, read, really need to look into it. Because if you look at the garden in here, I saw few people with different able, but I think the participation is lacking. And I think they're also part of our society. We really need to think of that and have a special track on that so they can at least not only connect it, but meaningful connection for people with different able. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, ma'am. In fact, uh, we do have a special track on persons with special needs. Uh, however, uh, for some reason, uh, we lack committed partners to join us to organize the track every year. So please do leave your email on that piece of paper and we'll make sure that we get in touch with you as well to continue the track. 
um i think uh, yes sir you wanted ma'am sorry i could not see you from there that's uh, kenya over to you uh, thank you very much uh, um i'm really very excited to be here and really appreciate uh, uh, you coordinating this uh, very important session um my name is caroline murianki from the communications authority of kenya in terms of your call for inputs uh, into the discussions that may go into next year's visits, we are interested in uh, three areas. Uh, one, um, it is notable that uh, the digital regulatory or regulation handbook developed by the World Bank and the ITU really bring out consumer affairs issues as uh, matters that are of importance uh, within the digital economy. And as such, I would like to propose that uh, there's an inclusion of uh, uh, consumer protection issues uh, and specifically uh, leveraging behavioral science in uh, um, building or um, informing policy around uh, consumer protection. Uh, this uh, would essentially uh, drive having um, a more meaningful and more enriched experience for consumers that are now uh, using uh, technology in all aspects of their lives. Uh, secondly, um, it is notable that uh, we are now in the digital economy. There's a lot that is going on there. We are connecting everyone and everything. And as such, uh, consumer empowerment is very important. I believe uh, the development of tools uh, that would empower or mechanisms to empower consumers is very important, seeing that we would not necessarily maybe as a regulator be present in all areas and as such uh, would be able to empower uh, our citizenry so that they could make uh, important purchase and use decisions. Uh, thirdly, uh, this is an issue that is uh, at the helm of our leadership, uh, the creative economy, and um, as, as a country it would be desirable to see how technology link, uh, the linkages uh, between technology and the uh, creative economy uh, can be able to spur growth of uh, that economy uh, with a view to determining uh, what kind of the case studies are there, what are the experiences from other countries. Uh, chair, that in my submission. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, we, Caroline from Kenya. We have noted all these, but also please do remember to go online and submit your official input. Only then your uh, submission will be considered as an official input. So please go online to the website, to the open consultation process. There is a form. Just need to fill it up and submit it to the secretariat. Uh, if there are no more interventions, uh, we can close the floor. Uh, yes, ma'am, over to you. Um, so please do uh, say, uh, write your email on that piece of paper uh, or give me your card and I'll make sure that you get, your, get the presentation. Thank you. Oh, we still have uh, Jean-Paul with us. Uh, Jean-Paul, if you want to say a few uh, closing remarks, <laughs> and then we need to move. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Gitanjali, and thank you for everyone for sticking around. I'm, uh, I have endurance, so. Um, uh, a few responses first to the questions, I think, on the academic uh, networks. So ECA does have certain entry points, uh, but I think the idea is that we can look more systematically this process on how we could uh, uh, engage on that. But I, I take the opportunity to invite you all, uh, particularly if you're in academia, to attend the African Science, Technology and Innovation Forum taking place on the 27th of February in Niamey, Niger. This is part of the African Regional Forum on Sustainable Development. And a lot of the entry points for uh, academia into the science and technology innovation space comes through that forum. So for example, at the last forum, we launched the Alliance of Entrepreneurial Universities, particularly aiming to support those universities using digital technologies to empower young entrepreneurs across the continent, review of curricula that are linked with entrepreneurship. It's not technology specific only, but there is a big aspect of it there. The, regional, the African Regional Center on Artificial Intelligence is designed to connect um, universities across the continent uh, based around uh, the use of artificial intelligence in a number of fields. We've, we've encouraged them to look at climate change, but they'll be looking at other fields as well. And uh, the shortly to be set up African Regional Center on Cybersecurity to be hosted in Lome 
in Togo uh, will also, as it, it, it will work to uh, popularize the model law on cyber cybersecurity that we have developed and which will be presented at 3 p.m. today at IGF. But it will also aim to encourage uh, academic uh, research into the, the use of cybersecurity. So these are some elements which are a little bit subject specific, um, but there are a number of other initiatives I think that uh, can be uh, uh, encouraged within the WISIS process. Um, on the, uh, if I can briefly cover the the, the aspect of um, access and voice, um, I think it would be remiss not to mention a fantastic African innovation. There is a, a uh, a, a, an application called Lenali in Mali, which actually uses voice-related uh, artificial intelligence to allow non-illiterate uh, persons, also persons who are visually impaired, to use um, uh, to use the internet. Actually, and I think part of the WISIS process is where we can use these best practices, and uh, and the. Uh, this gentleman called uh, Mr. Sidibe actually has made the software for this free. It is actually available and it can be replicated in other uh, African countries. Um, and these are the kind of initiatives that we do showcase at the Science, Technology and Innovation Forum in Niger. So again, I would uh, recommend everyone to, to register and attend. And then just uh, to summarize and, and thank everyone, um, I think the, there are many, many things happening actually on the African continent. We do sometimes have the risk of uh, fragmentation and duplication. Uh, the idea of the WISIS process is to try and reduce that. And I think that's where it's useful. We bring these ideas in the Internet Governance Forum. Uh, we encourage everyone who has ideas to then put that into the, uh, the process online, which then allows us a process for follow-up and continuation. So maybe I'll stop there because I've spoken a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, nearly 70 participants who were here physically with us. And virtually, we had over 100 participants joining us. So thank you so much. A big round of applause for virtual participants. Thank you so much. We missed you here, but uh, thank you for joining us. The technical team in there who has really helped us with our video presentations and everything. Thank you so much. And the ushers and our uh, Generation Connect Youth Delegate. <laughs> Can you introduce yourself, please? Thank you. Uh, I'm Atanas Bahisir from Yarakung, a member of the Generation Connect uh, Youth Initiative. And So for the virtual room, the meeting is over. We have to vacate the physical room. Uh, thank you so much for being there with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Recording in progress.
Hello, hello, good afternoon. Microphone testing. Hi, Safi. Is confirmed. Hello, Safi. Okay. Hi, Ahmad. Hello. Can someone confirm if I'm audible? Hello, everyone. Uh, we are starting the next session. I will soon log in and then uh, we open up for the online participation also. Give me 30 seconds. We're very late because the this is forum 2023 process took the room and took more time here. So please excuse the delay. Hi, everyone, and good afternoon to the session on connectivity. Um, it is titled, Let's Talk Connectivity. In a very short while, we're going to have uh, uh, panelists 
uh, respond to issues around connectivity, particularly for schools, and then we'll have a blend of both online and offline. So we'll take turns to ask the questions and also to um, just at the end of the, of the session to see how we can get responses from people also here. Um, if you know anybody that this session would be of help to, you may want to invite them to either join in person here or also online. So you can share the link. Um, to the people who probably benefit and are probably not on site. But if there are any of us who are here and would also make use of this session, kindly invite them to be a part of it. So like I said, we're going to have a blend of our online and offline folks and um, we have our speakers who are six and all. So I'll take the time to just mention your names and then we'll take um, the questions to um, across, across um, online and offline with everyone answering and then we can have questions from you also. So we have Dr. Moses Esmail from the University of, um, I think it was how it's written, but yeah, um, Dr. Dai Salam Wright. And we have Professor Joseph Noll from the University of Oslo. We have um, Madam Sandra Oswald from the Vodacom Tanzania. We also have Nguru Komando from Vodacom PLC. And we have Justina Mashiba from the UCSAF. And then we have Barack Otiano, um, also from African Higher Education Research Institute. So we're going to kickstart the conversation. And if you are just joining in, this is the conversation around connectivity, particularly about how to scale what's happening um, uh, with connectivity in rural areas. And we're going to take the time to have the, um, the questions go around. So if uh, we can have um, Mr. Nguvu, is he online? Can we see if he's online? And can he confirm if you can hear us? Yeah, we see him. Absolutely. We see you, Wave. Can you just say hi? If you're trying to speak, you are un uh, you are muted. Just a few minutes um, or seconds, should I say. We'll try to see what the issue is because uh, we can see you speak, but we are unable to hear you. Just to confirm that you are unmuted and you can try speaking again. Yes, I'm unmuted. Uh, Absolutely. Can yes. you hear me? Yes, we can loud and clear. And um, good um, it's afternoon from here in Ethiopia. We're excited to have you join um, us. So just by way of starting of the conversation, we want to know what Vodacom's plan is around 3G and 4G availability in Tanzania. And we want to just have a perspective from your background um, and the work you do, and essentially to have the conversation move forward from there. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ngubu Kamando. I'm the director for digital for uh, uh, Vodafone Tanzania. Uh, Vodafone, as you know, uh, is part of the Vodafone family, uh, whereby we do connect for a better future. Uh, and we believe into a social contract that is digital uh, society, inclusion for all on the planet. Now, uh, on digital societies, where you can double click and they get all the uh, other uh, 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 areas within the infrastructure, uh, platforms, and the solutions. So, when it comes to infrastructure, we do have uh, our plan to ensure that no one is left behind uh, on the digital economy, uh, whereby uh, we've been rolling out our infrastructure in terms of 2G, 3G, 4G, and even 5G. Uh, and uh, when it comes to broadband, we are really focusing on ensuring that uh, we provide a super quality network to end users uh, with over uh, three, 500 uh, uh, 2G sites and over 3,000 uh, 3G sites and over uh, nearly to 3,000 4G sites. And we've just started 5G. We are approaching 200 sites on 5G. But uh, all in all, uh, our, our, our real aim is to ensure that we provide a uh, reliable connection uh, with a variable of 99.999 uh, on radio side. And this is due to the fact that we have got uh, enough capacity on the back holes and have got ring connections to ensure that all the challenges when it comes to transmissions and uh, other uh, uh, passive infrastructure related are uh, being uh, taken care. So when it comes to uh, internet connectivity, we are still